Loveline, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician and an addiction medicine specialist. Tonight, Louis XIV is going to be in studio. These guys are uh, out of San Diego, and they did Kimmel tonight. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so uh, you can watch them on uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live tonight, probably uh, about 12-something your time. Uh, they just walked in. We're going to bring them in, I think, uh, after the first break. But uh, maybe we'll go to break just a little bit early. Fair so uh, Not to keep the boys waiting too long. All right. So, okay, the phone number. That's all we need. Yes? Yes. The 14th in the uh, studio tonight. And here we go. Take some phone calls. And uh, we'll speak to Aaron. It's 26. Aaron? Yes. Yeah. What's up? Um, I just have a question. I don't yeah. know. Like, I'm wondering about, like, a guy's libido. If, like, the older they get, the less interested in sex they are. How? Oh. Yeah, but that's after 50. There's True. When, when, do, when do you, well, as a, as a man of timeless passion, you, you, we, cannot, you, we cannot use your libido nor your saquito <laughs> as a yardstick to measure a man's passion. It's unfair to us mortals. Pep, pepito, libido, and saquito. Well, none of those <laughs> things apply. You will not use either Either one of the aforementioned three, the libido, the pepito, or the saquito of Dr. Drew's to measure a normal man's libido. Oh, my God. You would not use it. Yeah, you can't use that. That's right. You cannot. And it, in, in, yeah, men, they're around 50 may start dropping off pretty good. Saquito. Uh, worst <laughs> worst uh, item Taco Bell ever introduced <laughs> to their menu. Oh. We'll give, no, no. That's oh, not you, you almost had me. Drew gave me a look. Saquito. I tried everything in Taco Bell. It's uh, nutty. It's and, salty. It's... And here's the thing about guys. As their frontal lobe starts uh, decaying with a very advanced age, then it all comes back on again. Oh, then yeah. they start grabbing, they start things, grabbing yeah. nurses. Yeah. So, all right, but let, let's try to figure this out, Drew. Hmm. Guy hits a plateau at, uh, I mean, guy, you know, kicks into high gear at 15 years old. You know, I mean, it starts coming it, on. It's the ground running. But they're nervous and they're jittery. But by the time they're in their 20s, they have it worked out. And then it's early 20s straight on through. Through early 30s. Doesn't change. No, it doesn't change. But mid, middle, late 30s, it depends. And also, uh, it's, you know, it's not just the... Uh, Artists must be inspired every once in a while. You, you get a nice new bowl of fruit to paint. It's just like new. It's game on. You're like yeah. new, yeah. Yeah, but, that's but the, how you the, hear. Sort of the general sort of drive just decays from about 38 to 50 probably. Right, depending. And then there's the same, a lot of the same factors. Well, the Drew's going to disagree with me. But, I mean, other factors come to bear, such as who are you with? How much, how long have you been together? Have they put on 50 pounds? Is there is there a ton of... Is there a bunch of stuff going on? Well, yeah, there are things that raise men's libido and things that drive it down. Right. And, and their testosterone levels tend to follow that pattern. Like, for instance, if he's suddenly elected, 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 elected president of the United States, Saquito. <laughs> yeah. his Saquito tends to kick into action. Testosterone goes way up. Yeah. If, here, on the here, other hand, yeah. he's uh, down and out and a bunch of kids and it's right. somebody he doesn't like he's, for his wife, that can drive things the other direction. Well, here's, here's the thing, too, and I think, there's uh, two guys are, are can be very different in this one regard, which is Drew's a man of exquisite passion and will spread that passion upon anyone who comes into his uh, pubic crosshairs, right? I mean, oh, oh everyone, no, anyone. You, you could be with the same woman for 50 years. You would still you have passion. Now you like to say it's passion for her. I just think it's passion, and whoever's in front of you is going to get some of it. No, I couldn't be with someone for 50 years. I didn't have passion for him. Yeah, yeah, but you, you know, I hope your wife's not listening. But you could have passion for many people, and once it's true of anybody, it's true of anyone. Yeah. And and you have that passion. Here's what I'm saying: There's some guys who run out of steam a little bit. But if you dropped off a uh, yeah, Fred Risks of Hollywood model in yes. front of them, pow, it's back on again. Yes, that's true. And then they would taper down with that person, yes, that's true. too, and then pow again. Yes. Which is... That's the Coolidge effect. Yeah, which is... Drew will tell that story in a second. But it's the way many guys are, and it's almost what separates guys from women sometimes. In, in a way, 
the passion straight on through like you have, Drew, is A, uh, admirable, because guys would just be happier that way, but they're they're just not cut out that way, a lot of guys. And B, makes for long-term relationships. Yeah, it's true. Whereas the guys that taper down... You lose interest. Well, it doesn't matter how beautiful, how buxom, how tall, four nice. years into it, yeah, it's time yeah. for another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Aaron? Good times. Yeah. I don't know which one... Uh, how old's your husband? Your guy is, yeah. He's 27. Oh, please. And how... how oh, please. He's just hitting a stride now. Well, no, he is... Chronologically oh, but he, but he or biologically, with, but with her, I see. how long has he been with you? Um, we got together like three years ago, but I've known him for like since like 1996. I've known and, him. I've known and him. What for do you? A long what do you? What's he good for? A month? Um, it used to be like we would do really good. We would. We were really like intimate, but now yeah, it's, I don't know. I listen, listen, Aaron. <laughs> please, with the used to be. Every, all well, couples we, aft like maniacs at the beginning. Yes, exactly. Uh-huh. I don't care. I, I, but if we needed that, if we'd ask for that, we would. And it's like you going to the doctor, and the doctor says, "Oh, Adam, uh, this you, happens all the time." Yeah, you have cancer, and you're like, "Well, it used to be when I was in my teens, I was quite an athlete." You, I know you're 90. You have you, cancer. You now. can't imagine. Yes, I was on the I was on the rowing team in college. Yes, that was in 1927. You can't imagine how people cram extraneous information into their history because to them, they need you to know because they've decided it's important. I, I moved like a gazelle until I got in a motorcycle accident. Now, it, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you yeah. used to. And you used to. I, I, my blur, vision was a little blurry before I hit that curb. And uh, okay. Yeah, you used to. Yeah. I, I know. Everyone used to something, but now it ain't working that way. So what are you good for a month now, Aaron? Like, I have to beg him for like twice. Twice a month? Twice a month. Is he on medication? No. Is, is he, he de- is he depressed? Is he pulling? Is he withdrawing? Um, he doesn't really. Nothing's changed. He's never been like really open or talkative with me. No, right. Does he have any medical problems? Mm-mm, no. Is he working excessively? Um, he he just works like four hours, five hours a day. Oh, <laughs> decent gig. What's he do? Engineer this show? <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, here, here's, it wasn't me. here's the thing, Aaron. Um, I think sometimes guys drift off in a relationship. Whatever it is, a bad sign. Something is wrong. No, it's a, it is a bad sign, but there are guys who sort of drift off and need to be yanked back in and straightened mm-hmm. out a little bit, and you're going to have to do that right now. Let's get a little cathartic at him. I know. No, I know. Yeah. Uh, no. No, most guys, a lot of guys will do that. Yeah. They'll drift off. I can see that, yeah. No, but, you're, no, I can see you don't today. drift off. No. Plus, your 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 wife's like a border collie running around you. I mean, she's never going to let you get off the path very far. Some wives go to sleep. The guys drift off a little bit, and then four months go by. The like, chicks hey, are happened? the yeah. chicks are resenting it. The yeah. guys sleepwalking through the relationship. Yeah. All right. Now, what were we talking about? Samantha. Samantha. Twenty-one. Uh, yes. What's up? Well, I think that. I have a problem. Um, I don't know what you'd call it, but I'm like a love addict, I guess. Ooh. I have to have m- different men to keep me feeling good about myself, I guess. It's like mm-hmm. I, I'm not really a sex addict because I don't do it for the sex. I do it for the attention. Well, and- most women who are sexually addicted, believe it or not, actually come to sexual addiction through love and intimacy, a compulsion. And yeah. 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 I don't know. With, I'm not sure if love is a me- big it's component. It, it, it well, it, feel they, like they it. experience it that way. But, it, yeah, of course it's not real love. But, but the, it's, it's the, the compulsion to be close to somebody and to be uh, feel feel that sense of intimacy, even though it's sort of uh, mm-hmm. pseudo-intimacy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, Samantha, there's kind of two common ways you get in down that path. One is you know, some sort of significant trauma and abuse in childhood, particularly at the hands of your parents. Or sort of the other side of that spectrum where you like have eating disorders and people don't sort of respect the boundaries between you and them. So yeah. Which, which we got here? Um, I was abused by my dad. All right. Well, that's it. So what did he do to you? Um, he beat me and emotionally he abused me. All right. Well, Hold on. Perfectly normal, perfectly healthy. And shocking. And shocking. All right. How many guys have you been with? I'm, I counted them up. I, if I'm not forgetting, then it's like 46. 
<laughs> I'm not forgetting anybody. <laughs> I think you got to, you know what? I would, uh, I'll say, you should say 45 because you can round down. Once you, once you get into the 40s, you round, you go up. Like if you're 49, you got to go up to 50. Yeah. If 46, you go down yeah. to 45. Do you uh, have any problems as a result of this? Do you, wear, do you have the guys wear condoms? Do you, do you yes. pregnant? Most of the time I have been. I do have, I have gotten myself a couple STDs. All right. And, um, they're, they're being she got, got herself a new car too. Yeah, huh? got myself a couple right. CDs. And... Well, Samantha, let's uh, let's go now. You're on autopilot. Your dad abused you. You're acting out. How about you get it under control? I I know. I'm trying. It's like I can't even. Even when I don't want to go out, I like drag myself out. Okay, D dad was an alcoholic too, right? Mm -mm. Yes, Samantha, I am an alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. And dad oh, was yeah. dad was also right. Make it yeah. 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 I just like making, smell. getting drunk and making it's, bad decisions. No, it's I farted. No, it's not even that. Just I no, smell really. the alcoholism. So here's the deal, Samantha. You need a 12-step program if you are serious about changing your life and changing your feelings about yourself and your relations with other people and having a more meaningful existence and becoming something that you really feel good about. To please get yourself a sponsor. Work the steps, and I believe rather quickly, by the sounds of you you may find something uh, substantial for yourself there. Go to AA, go to SA, go to a 12-step program. I mean, you'll be welcomed into AA. That may be all you need. You don't have to go, you know, as you go along, maybe you'll find you want to go to towards the Sex and Love Act Addicts programs, too. Oh, they but, got love in there now. Yeah, well, they have SLA, Sex and Love Addiction. No, oh, yeah. I thought there was a Symbionese Liberation yeah, Army. At one time it was. Wow. Was Patty Hearst was involved with the I SLA. know. Uh, Chris, we're going to give us a quick uh, tutorial on that during the break. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. Uh, Chris, SLA? Symbionese? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. Symbionese Liberation Army? Yeah. Who were they? Isn't that what he, they kidnapped? Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, they kidnapped her. And she was the heir of some newspaper. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Yeah. I don't see. Yeah. You did know. I know. All right. Yeah. Somebody saw the USA today. <laughs> today because... Uh, oh, today? I, well, it was the, it's, it's the uh, 30th anniversary or something. Oh, is that it was right? like yesterday or something like that. Something's going on. Check that out. Sure. It was just <laughs> oh, and not of, of her arraignment or her... She, she did prison time or something right. like that. <laughs> Listen, we went, to the, uh, we went to the burnt out hideout in uh, Watts when I was a kid. Checked it out. You and your parents or you were in high school? No, or? no. Listen, my parents didn't do anything. You just you and your buddies just went. No, I wasn't in high school. I was in the third grade or something. I mean, the school took you. Oh, I went to that hippie school. Oh, of course. The oh, teachers they, wanted they to wanted, check. They it. They wanted to show you what the man did to somebody. No, no, they wanted to check it out. They wanted to check it out themselves. Wow. You know, here's the thing. Uh, when when you go to a hippie school, the teachers just want to do their own thing most right, of the well, time. Right. Because when you're hippie, other people don't really exist. Not know, not really. Yeah. No. So you just what you do is you just. Uh, you label everything a learning experience, and you hit the road. Like, hey, we're going to go score a dime bag. Uh, we got the kids here. Well, let them learn about commerce on the street. <laughs> you know, you just go. You know, that's what you do. You want to go check it out, you just go check it out. Yeah, those, those are my two field trips as a child. I went to uh, the uh, Symbionese Liberation uh, Front's uh, Burnt Out Watts uh, headquarters where they shot it out with the uh, LAPD and then they all burned to the ground. And then uh, about four years later, I went to the uh, Laurie's uh, Taco Seasoning Plant in Eagle Rock. Those are very, very oh. important moments in a young man's life. Huge. So, so you got to see the look on my face when uh, Drew's wife hits me up for money because uh, the girls are going to uh, Paris this year for a uh, figure skating competition. I'm like, are you kind? Yeah, they're going to... And then, and then an hour lecture ensues. <laughs> I still have the taco seasoning, the sample they gave me. The tears start pouring down. It's very uncomfortable. Yeah. All right, where are we? Drew, I want to talk to uh, Tabitha. All right, go ahead. 33. Tabitha? Hello. You're uh, 33? Yeah. What's the matter? You're Speak depressed, up. Tabitha. Ooh. What's up here? Ooh. Um. I had moved to L.A., and I had um, some rough times and making ends meet. So, um, you know those ads in the L.A. Weekly where they say um, you can make, like, a couple of grand a week dancing? Like, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Adam, Adam has things? done that several times. Sure. You yeah. know, you, and you have the driver and all that. Oh. Mm. Right? You, you go to parties and dance? Oh, yeah. Um, but um, it turned out that um, I went to a hotel, and they were doing a thing. And then, um... They're doing a what? Sting. Sting. Oh, Sting. Undercover. Yeah. I see. And, um... 
the cop wouldn't let me, well, I didn't know he was a cop, but the guy wouldn't let me out of the room, and he was blocking the door, and I was really scared, and he, he tried to, like, get me to do something with him, but I wouldn't, and, mm -hmm. um, and when I tried to leave, um, they arrested me, and they booked me for prostitution, Yeah. and so I'm just wondering, like, um, don't laugh, but if I ever um, strive to, like, get in the business or was trying and if I got an agent, I mean, down the line, um, let's say, or maybe I have an agent down the line, if they find out or if they do a background check for whatever, am, is like, my life over? No. What? what? People have done all kinds of things. Be an actress? Yeah. Yeah, or even with... And it, hurt. it helps to have a rap sheet as an actress because I know executives will run the other way because I know there was a TV show that I was supposed to be on and, yeah, yeah. Um, you're delusional Tabitha what uh, let me explain something the, nobody gives a rat's ass in this town about anything except for what you look like and are you good and that's about it e everybody gets into this stuff with the, you know this is sort of it's the, not even are you good do other people think you're good do the adult <laughs> yeah here's the here's the thing this is the adult version of uh, the teacher didn't like me so he gave me a bad right, grade right, right. your teacher doesn't no yeah. you know your f f four fourteen year old gives you that line of crap because well, you, you were thinking that they took off from they they, they uh, discharge you from that potential television show because of this well you know how they they take your driver's license you know, number and they want to get you know they want to find out more about you if you oh no no no, no no they that's just, not what they, they do no, they only do that for tax yeah stuff. that's, that's they're not, just they're yeah. not running a background no check on way. you so what you were you you were uh, if you were going to host a network primetime yeah, show the Oscars or yeah, something they, they might they, look into somebody you. would look into some but uh, not yeah. not till then no you. You uh, as an extra in, in the cafe scene of Jake and Progress, no, they're, they're not. Extra. They're not. They're not running a background check. All right, on you're, you. you're 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 the, the bartender. Right, so you're delusional. So, so, so basically, let's say I'm just saying, if my, you know, if I was to get a break and I was to make it in something, you know, decent part, whatnot, you know, is my life over? Like, cause I was. No, really we've said no. We said, said no. And the secondly, day. don't. I, I swear, I know this sounds uh, convenient, but don't look at it as get a break. Yeah. <laughs> Or, like, do you think if a guy finds out, like, a guy I'm dating, he won't want nothing to do with me? Like, if, like Adam dated a stripper. Married, Did like, you do process? I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life. I, I Lexus nexus her before I started uh, Did you, banging her. <laughs> Did you, uh, were you a prostitute? No, no, I had, like, regular dancing. jobs, but I was, like, down and out. Like, I have nobody to turn to. Like, no. All right, look, all right, something's wrong with you, Tabitha. Yes. I don't know what's going on with you, but you just, you, it's <laughs> like if a... Separate. Yeah, if if a if a deer could talk, yeah. this, this is what it would sound like. What what happened? You're, you're, it says here you're 33. You don't have a little better handle on life at 33. Everything's still so uh, mysterious, dramatic, and mysterious, and confusing. What's it's going not, on? You know, it's not that it's confusing. It's like I I thought about this like last week. And I was trying to call you guys. <laughs> okay. And you got to do just better than us. I'm, I'm just so worried because I started thinking maybe my life is over because no. I have this on my record. Uh, all right. No, now, look, no. I'm going to give you some choices. You are, uh, are you high? Are you drunk? Is there any substance you're on? Did you ever have a brain injury? Or is there just something going on emotionally that has stunted your growth? You mean like, am I, like, am I high right now? I don't, just, I don't, I don't take drugs. You don't take uh, drugs. Yeah. You got to start taking drugs. Uh, yeah, that no. way you have an excuse, at least. Okay, here's a, a, a junior college. Any junior college in your background? Yeah. Yeah, of course. course. Hold on a second. Course. Hold on. Hold on. Shocked. Oh, good <laughs> Lord. Good I, Lord. I'm coming, Weezy. <laughs> oh, my God. Shocking. Look, she just needs to get a lot. All right. She, listen, Tabitha needs a lot. Tabitha. Yeah? You need, a, you need friends. You need, you need, you friends. need a relationship. You need female friends. You need a job. You need a life. Yes. Yes, you need a life. And I'm not sure this is the best town to find one, by the way. Yeah, and the whole actress thing, would it would have, it would have happened by now if it was going to happen. Don't waste your time and everyone else's time. Okay, get a, can, get can a career. Dr. Drew's, like, really hot. Like, he's, like, a really hot guy, and he's smart, and he's incredibly sexy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm hotter <laughs> than people know, and Drew's dumber <laughs> than people know. So I figure that puts us about, about the same level again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Okay, baby. All right, Listen, good. enough for her. I'm so, I, I feel bad for her. I really do. I do, too, because it is, 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 it's like 
Some people go through life like a, a ship with no rudder. They're yeah. just they're just cast out into yeah. the sea, and yes. the tide just sort of drags and, them around. And and once in a while, they, they hit the Gulf Stream, and they sail along, right. and it's nice weather, and right. then they get thrown into the rocks. Right. And unfortunately, that, that sort of empty, um, unstructured life is just a representation of what's going on inside. That's right. And that's really the problem. She needs something on the outside that helps her on the inside. And the outside needs to be structured. Needs to be stable. Need to have, you know, you need to have an eight, nine to five job. You need to have regular friends you hang out with. You need to have a stable relationship. This oh, the road yeah. just bad for her. Yeah, it's just, it's just bad for say, you. It's she, bad for her. She may need to find a Jehovah or some uh, uh, nutball well, religion. Well, she would like be that. a great candidate. She would be, be a great victim for one of these yeah, uh, cult. cults. Oh, yeah, oof. I'm looking to start a cult. All oh, right. imagine what they would do with her. Oh, <laughs> yeah, put her on a stick and have sex with her for the round. Mm. Yeah, about it. About a year, and then eventually uh, she die, and then and then just one more year of sex, and then they get rid of her. That's how it works. Louis the Fourteenth is uh, here tonight. Yes, Drew. No, we're going to take a break because well, the band is here, and we're going to bring them in a little early. But what do you want to do? I want to tease the next call and comment about it. All right. The next caller is uh, Ben, whose wife has completely lost her lib libido after having a baby. And I am looking for callers like that to put on television. I'm sure we'll talk to Ben about this, too. I'm also looking for people who have fears of pregnancy. You know, men get bizarre fears that they're going to, the baby's going to see them having sex or they're going to poke them in the head or whatever, the weird stuff that guys have. I mean, when they're pregnant. When they're pregnant. The fears around having sex while pregnant. Well... And then horror stories of, of disruption of sex life after delivery. Well, we, we run this, uh, all the uh, public service announcements we run on this show are ridiculous and quasi-retarded. And one day, I will meet the guy who does the airplane safety turbulence, wear your seatbelt on. one. I will find the company. I, it'll, I make it, I'll make it my life's work to find this guy. But most of the ones, Good now that one, that one is, is uber-retarded. But we do have we do have ones that are just sort of mildly retarded. One is the uh, don't drink when you're pregnant, and it does do that thing where it says this is the sound of what your baby hears yes, yes. when you're drinking. Drum, which, drum, yeah, drum, drum. yeah. Except for then the baby hears uh, the ice falling into the tumbler <laughs> and the Crown Royal going in. I'm not sure the. So I'm saying if the baby can hear you pouring a highball, certainly having sex, is certainly weird. getting pounded by the old yeah, man is going to is going to show up on the baby's radar. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, by their logic, absolutely. Oh well, I listen to the PSAs. Yeah, yes. Yes. All right, yes, Drew. Yes. Idiots. And then Where finally, are the other those thing people? Is, I'm going to talk to those PSA at idiots. Eight thirty tomorrow night Pacific time. Eight thirty. The uh, what's today? Twenty second. Twenty third. The twenty third at eight thirty. Taking calls on. Drugs. This will be at 8.30 Pacific Time, 11.30 Eastern. Uh, drugs that have ruined people's sex lives. Yeah. Like illicit drugs, ecstasy, that kind of thing. All right. We'll uh, take a little break. Louis the Fourteenth here tonight. We'll be right back after this. Wow, where do you keep your wallet? My hip Up your ass, you mutt! Uh, hey, everybody. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Jason Hill and Brian Karznick. Both here tonight. Hello. Hello. Louis the 14th. Hello. Thanks for having us. The uh, the band is uh, on Kimmel tonight, so uh, mm. you definitely want to watch that. And uh, also, we'll uh, hear something off the uh, new CD. So, you guys, well, for, you know, I'm jealous because the band uh, formed in 2003. Mm -hmm. so. Wow. We grew up together, though. The two That's of us grew correct. up together since we were little kids. And, and everyone and thinks they're from England. No. No. People think that. Well, they, they do think yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, 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 but they're from San, San Diego. Diego yeah. But yeah. Were you, you were influenced by uh, British bands? Well, in the same way, probably, that Mick Jagger was influenced by, you know, American, American bands. singers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're influenced just as much by uh, American bands, I think. Oh, you are? Yeah, well, well, you know, well, I mean, old blues guys like Sunhouse and Blind Willie, Willie McTell and... I don't know. You know. There's a number of them, you know. Beach I like, boys, I like when uh, when the old blues guys dies and you see the ad in the newspaper. Were you a offspring of uh, <laughs> 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 Willie the Hitman Johnson? Yeah. And it's like, he had 89 kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we've only been able to find 43 of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come claim it. Claim it. You got it. There's a drum kit that could be yours if uh, you just. And everyone's like, everyone's always like, ah, I was a great guy. It's like, he had 89 kids. Uh, didn't, didn't know 80 of them. Uh, all right. So, well, well, like, who'd you listen to growing up? A lot of different bands. Yeah. T I, I've always liked T-Rex and T -Rex. David Bowie and Bowie. stuff as far as the English, but uh, I've always liked, you know, Beatles, Beach Boys, Beatles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Fox and stuff. I mean, you go through different different phases. Huey Lewis and the news. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like the the news solo stuff without it's just Huey. the news. Yeah. The news on their own or yeah. powerhouses. You, you may be. You may be. <laughs> Michael Bolton. You may have your tongue in your cheek, but you just left. If you said that in front of Jimmy Kimmel, oh, he would tan your hide. Oh, that's right. Oh, he's, Huey Lewis. Yeah, he loves him. Of Huge course. fan. I saw the big uh, frame picture of him in the background. So. Oh yeah. Not a <laughs> drop of irony in yeah, it either. Sure. It's just Huey Lewis, <laughs> Steve Garvey, and Huey Lewis are the two guys that Jimmy would have uh, sex with beside, <laughs> beside moi. Uh, so uh, we're going to hear something off the CD. The guys are going to be playing at the, well, the Troubadour Troubadour out. Smart Night, yeah. Is yeah. that sold out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, then that's that. I've not seen you guys uh, perform, but I see you, uh, you bring a little glam to it. Do you, do you, is there more than, uh, than uh, just a little eye shadow? Do you do, is there some stage theatrics going <laughs> no, on? No, we just rock, you know. We yeah, I mean, it's, that's all you need, I'm just asking. I mean, we rock in like a Bon Scott ACDC sort of way. Yeah. Not so much a uh, poison glam way, I suppose. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll tell you, I, I turned on the TV last night and saw one of those, uh, you know, VH1, uh, We Are the 80s things yeah. or something. Uh, I, they had some... Uh, I think it was a uh, Motley Crue video from like you know eighty seven. Forget. Oh, you forget. Yeah. <laughs> you forget. Like you're watching this going out of your mind. Like what? What? Yeah. What? No one said anything. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy that no one said anything. It's a vicious reminder. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not. Uh, oh. Uh, yeah. And it, by the way, the uh, the CD reminds me. Like back in the day. Uh, bands used to put hot chicks on the cover of their CDs, mm -hmm. and and you would almost look forward to it, like uh, when the Ohio Players would come out well, with a CD. Mm -hmm. Back before video, before internet, Adam, yeah, that's all you had to masturbate to. Yeah, it was something. Yeah, it was that or the uh, <laughs> raft box over at the Big Five with the chick on the bikini floating on mm -hmm. on yeah. said raft and said. Pool. But that was hard to get that into the men's room. <laughs> it was hard to get yeah. that in. Yeah, <laughs> especially if you're beating off and you pull the cord and oh. things just went on it, <laughs> <laughs> went up like a zodiac. But, yeah, the, the, the thing about uh, Louis XIV is they put a hot chick on their, on their album, and I've been staring at it the entire yeah. time. It's beautiful ass. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. And that's, yeah. Yeah, how'd you find her? Uh, she's half German, half Thai from Mississippi, so she has oh, an accent. Wow. It's a great combination. Uh, we just, you know, we just did, we found her. And I was, that's my writing on her back. I actually got to write on her back, and yeah. it's great. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's, we figured it's, uh, I didn't want to look at us on our own record cover. Right. I wanted to look at something, you know, the whole record is very sexual and about girls. Right. You know, so why have us on the cover? Yeah, yeah now how much, now I see you have about one half to one third ass crack showing, uh -huh. not yourselves, but on the beautiful uh, German Thai woman from uh -huh. Mississippi. Yes. Uh, did the label give you any uh, surus about that? Well, at first, when we said this is what we're going to do, you know, the, the art department and this and that, they all said, oh, no, of course not. You know, and, right. then, and so, you know, a, a couple of days later, I, as I've said, I thought it was assumed this is what we're going to do because we said it. Right. You know, they said, no, no, you can't do this. I just called up the, the chairman of the company. I said, you know, Roxy Music had nudity on Atlantic way right. back when. Why can't we? And within a minute and a half, he goes, you know what? You're right. All right, let's do it. And and did they know, did they have the picture, or did they just have the concept? No, it was just the concept. And I just said, I want, this is what we want to do. And yeah. and they were really cool, man. I, you know, it, Atlantic Records is a really cool label. I mean, because they allowed us to do everything like that. You know? We uh, we once, uh, when we were doing the Man Show, we got in this argument with the executives at uh, Comedy Central, which is how much ass crack can you show? <laughs> because that was you of a guy, though, yeah? No, no, guys oh. or girls. <laughs> oh, really? You can show ass. You can show a plumber bending over fixing a sink and show, you know, inch and a half of ass crack, and that's funny, but if the pants are down, you know, past the uh, equator or prime meridian or whatever, wherever the halfway point is on the ass, then it's offensive. So we said, how much ass crack can you show? Because you can't show bare ass, but mm -hmm. you can't show plumber's crack. How much? And they thought about it for a while, and they said, three-quarter ass crack. <laughs> <laughs> and so we... Came out with three quarter ass crack shorts <laughs> that I eventually had to get into, which is uh, disgusting. But uh, I, I love it. See, when you take n sort of bizarre nonsense rules and yeah, you force yeah. people to actually put a number to them, oh, it yeah, actually yeah. Then it shows it, gets, it up for how ridiculous it is. Yeah, it gets ridiculous because, yeah, yeah. you know, boob, a jug, melon, can, Winnebago's, <laughs> and tatas, no, fine. No, no way. Yeah.
Can't say it. <laughs> for, for obvious reasons. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Offensive. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, if you said, oh, that chick had great, just just huge bozos. Uh, bra, <laughs> Cans, jugs, whatever. Bra, yeah, bra salamis and stuff like he say anything like But he say the T word, obviously that's <laughs> offensive. Yeah, you do the math, of course. All right, so uh, where are we? Taking calls. Here We're we go. taking calls, and then, then we'll hear a uh, Louis the Fourteenth call. Anna? I mean, yeah. uh, song. Go ahead. Um, hi. I just wanted to ask if, um, if my boyfriend and I have anal sex. Well, we've been thinking about it for a little while, and my yeah. biggest thing is because it's my butt that's going to take the beating, if there's any way to minimize the pain. Mm -hmm. Why would you contemplate doing <laughs> something that you anticipate being truly painful? Um, I don't know. I've always, just like stuff that I've heard about, I just... I don't know. Assume yeah, but some women find it appealing. They either, either doesn't hurt them or it feels good. And yeah, the people for you... whom it really hurts. But she, she doesn't know. She, she's pretty much uh, seems to know. Well, I mean, some people feel that way with tattoos or piercings or things uh, things of that no, nature. Don't hurt. No, they do hurt, but they're they're attracted and want to try them. Or it's a challenge. It's like uh, some people want to do uh, they want to do a triathlon. But why? Uh, when it comes that's to that's what sex. they should they should tack this on to the end of the Iron Man. Oh sure. Cornholing. Say uh, 2.6-mile <laughs> swim, a uh, marathon, 108-mile bike ride, and then a good fudge packet. Well, Seven-and-a-half-inch cornhole. The good news is there's a guy handing you a Gatorade while <laughs> fudge packet. Volunteer. Yeah. All right. So uh, Anna wants to try it, so let her try it. I'm not, I'm not telling her not to. I'm just saying, you know. How's your husband? To be a uh, something that's pleasing to you. How's your husband doing in the uh, girth department? Uh, Pito, yeah, and you call it that? Yeah. Your boyfriend. Um, what do you mean, like waist size? Waist size. Yeah, yeah no, that's what he means. Yeah. Yeah. No, because I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to buy him some Dockers this year. I want to know is he 34, 36? Inseam, inseam. How does he dress? To his left or to his right? No, is his penis? Is it, is it wide? Is it thin? Oh, um, it's about seven. It's pretty average from what I've seen so far. Average is five and a half. Yeah. Okay. I think it's more like five and three. Yeah, yeah. Average is five Slap and a half. in the face. Yeah, it's seven. It's average. You know, <laughs> nothing special. Uh, yeah, I, I, okay. Does it, it, so it's not a uh, can of corn, in other words? <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, Anna, so try it. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a student. Student? Yeah. Student? Full-time student. Full-time. Mm -hmm. Junior college? Uh, actually, no. College. University. Three? Really? Northridge? Yeah. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah. yeah, the reason I knew that, because it's, it's really, you, you should really just say, uh, you know, welcome home junior college students. It's, it's a four-year, two-year college is really what, that's what should be called. It, it, it should be called that. <laughs> George Thorogood had a, uh, I think he, his band was like a, a four-man trio or something he called it, and this, that's what Northridge is. How do I know my mom went there? Oh, yeah, forever. So, she still so, goes it, isn't she? Yeah. 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 It's like junior college. You never leave. Here's, here's, the, uh, here's the admittance requirements uh, in Northridge. You have to actually just walk in. It's, <laughs> it's physically you have to admit. You have to actually just show up. But, but Anne, if you yeah. want to, sort of tips and techniques and stuff, uh, we've had Tristan Taramino on here a bunch of times. She sort mm. of makes a career out of that. Yeah. And uh, look her up on the web. Hey, you l use some lube. What about a hot bag? Remember, she had a whole thing about graduated plugs and things. Ugh. You want to, should you dilate yourself? How would yeah, you how dilate? About how much are you going to dilate with a water? Well, you hit yourself with a hair dryer down there. your stool there. falls out of your rectum. When you, I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, I'm saying if I sat, if I jumped into a cold kiddie pool, you would have difficulty penetrating me. But uh, you hit me with like a, one of those paint stripper uh, hot air blowers. I'll, I'll, uh, Open right up. I'll open right up like that uh, arch in that uh, Utah National Park there. Was, Is this uh, an invitation? That you're no, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I, uh, hot hot bath? What is that? Yeah, couldn't hurt, couldn't hurt. Okay. All right. So, uh, here we go. Yeah, right. I'm just thinking about it. Keep Anna. going. I'm just saying. All right, we should hear a uh, Louis Fourteenth. Okay, I'm still looking for people with fears of pregnancy and people with a drop, a drop or change in their sex drive after delivery of a baby yeah. uh, for television. Drop or change is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, it's a change. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, oh, what song are we playing? Which is way? a great segue into a uh, Louis XIV song. song. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. Is this, is this the uh, first song we're yep. playing? Ah. 
Okay. This is a little something from uh, Louis XIV. This is called Finding Out True Love is Blind. Joe. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Louis XIV uh, in tonight. Uh, best Little Secrets are kept is the name of the uh, CD. Going to be on uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live tonight and at the Troubadour tomorrow night. We'll take a mm -hmm. uh, quick break. Be back with Jason and Brian right after this. <laughs> Tough. Tough being me. Yeah, everybody. It's uh, Love Line. I'm uh, Adam Carolla, the literal millionaire. Dr. Drew is uh, over there on paper, I guess, uh, literally a millionaire. Probably have to sell a few things. Yeah. yeah. Louis XIV, uh, soon to be millionaires here. Jason and Ryan, uh, both here uh, representing the band on Jimmy Kimmel Live tonight. I. Uh, I find myself wearing my Jimmy Kimmel Live hat. I just noticed, I noticed that. that. Yeah, yeah I just I wear that a lot. And then the Jimmy Eat World. Well, I wear shirt. the Jimmy Eat Jimmy. World uh, sweat jacket because I'm I'm a swag guy, and I have it usually it's unzipped about three quarters away, so it just says Jimmy, oh, yeah. and then it says World yes. at the end. And the people think that I'm just uh, an obsessed Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel fan. Yeah. There, it's two different. <laughs> but you Jimmy's. are, but you're his. I'm wearing my lover, Jimmy sometimes. Fallon uh, underpants, by the way. <laughs> sometimes lover, sometimes uh, life partner. I'm a fan, and uh, you know, I'm not scared to kiss a little ass every once in a while. <laughs> no, no, I got to tell you, when I show up, when I show up at work wearing the Jimmy Kimmel Live hat mm -hmm. every day, it's noted. People are jealous. People know. They know what you're up to. No, oh, I know. Let me tell you, well, kids, a little tip about ass kissing. <laughs> not a bad thing. <laughs> Not bad. Well, no, he, no, literally, me, literally, in that what he's saying kind. is he wants his ass kissed. Yes, I uh -huh. You yes, see what I'm saying? Yes, I do he's encouraging that. that. Yeah. So both for you guys too. I'm sure. It no, we used to. We used to. Uh, Chris, a little ass kiss. Uh, Adam, you're <laughs> so cool. You're really oh. handsome tonight. Please. You know? I mean, you're just looking good. <laughs> we used to do the <laughs> man show. Wrong. There was some guy that Call would go like. Some guy would say, looking good, boss, when I'd be heading boss, up the see, stairs. See, and, like, and, yeah. and everyone would be like, he's just kissing your ass. And I'd be like, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Right. Because, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, am I yeah. right? Am yes, I right? I agree. I, I right? completely huh? agree. Chris, kid, am I right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Hefe. Yes, Hefe. Hefe. Yeah, okay. Hefe. Yeah, that's what they call me around my but head. But how do you know if they're lying or not? you got to know doesn't, where you're doesn't, at. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. And it's, oh, but and what it's if you got like snot coming out of your nose and you're on your way to the stage? So you want somebody to say, hey, boss, not looking so hot. No, yeah, boss, yeah. come here, buddy. Come yeah, here, buddy. I had, I, I had Who is uh, that? <laughs> that's engineer Anderson. Who is that? Oh, he's, <laughs> yeah. He's in another building. Oh, God. Oh. Far, far away. Oh, boy. No, <laughs> no, nobody could get more out of that last conversation than you, Anderson. <laughs> that, that was aimed at you, buddy. <laughs> See what happens. Shut up, Some... Anderson. Just shut up and do the buttons, would you please? <laughs> <laughs> and, that, that, and that's when we're getting along. And it's just call him Hefe from now on. It, 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 it'll put you in the yeah. put you in the I like his snot scenario, though. <laughs> you make a good point. Shut up and do Whatever. the buttons. Uh, Pre? Yeah, hey. You, you're 20? Yeah, hey. Yes. What's up? Um, I was actually... Oh, hang on a second, Pre. We have not heard from the Chief Thunderbear in quite some time. Mm. Just think mm. about it. What? Wait, what? Well, well, she's she, 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 well, she greeted you with Yahe. Oh, okay. All right. She's got a, uh, got a uh, piercing question. All right. Go ahead, yeah. Pri. I was just wondering about the chances of losing all feeling over there, and I've heard a lot of rumors about that. Is that true? or? That is true. That is true. I've then heard what? of that. Your clitoris? Yes. I've heard yeah. of it being overly sensitive for a while and then shutting down afterwards. Ooh. And uh, I don't know what the percentage is. I don't know that anybody's ever studied that, but I've definitely heard about that. How does that happen? And would it be if really you take a foreign body and cram it through a, Get a piercing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shoving a needle. Oh, yeah. oh we're talking about piercing. Yeah. yeah. that part. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I think you should really not do it anymore. Get one? Would it be like, is it something to worry about? Say that again. What was the question? Well, is it something yeah. to actually worry about right now? Yes. Well, how could it not? Why? How could it not be, Pre? It happens. It happens to a lot of women. How could it not be something to worry about? Well, here's the thing. It's. It's. I don't think it's at epidemic levels in this country. But the point is, is uh, things could possibly go wrong in in an area of your body that's sort of a tantamount to monkeying with your eyesight. Yeah. You know. It's going to be a long life. You're. Uh, Why would you do 20. it in the first place? Anyway? It's right. not attractive. Well, it looks horrible, and you might lose all sensitivity just, in yeah. another reason. Yeah, it, absolutely no reason to do it. I'll tell you, if it brought you up from a six to a nine, I could see rolling those dice. There's no functional reason for it. In other words, it's not as though it accomplishes something in the eyes of other people. Right. It's not as though it really. I mean, rarely is it truly enhanced sexual functioning, and it can could be a problem for sexual Well, let's just put it this way. If you're not really into sex, this isn't going to get you there. Mm -hmm. And if you're digging it, 
Well, then you're digging it already. And as far as uh, the guys go, we don't know you have one until the legs are kimbo and the panties are hanging off the lamp. Anyway, so the deal is done. And by the way, for the most part, people that feel compelled to do this are people that have trauma histories. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, but the last thing you want to do is feel some cold metal when you go down a girl's pants, right? Yeah. Well, I would, you know, I mean, that's the last thing I want to think of. Right. Well, actually, penis is the last thing uh, I'd like to think of. The last, the number two, then, of course. Second, number two. second to last yeah, is yeah, the yeah. old metal. Yeah, yeah. 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 number two. Yeah. yeah. The last yeah. thing is the penis, yes. Yeah. 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 I can't think. I'd rather encounter like a dragon or something. Yeah, you'd you know, rather yeah, be bit. I'd rather yeah. be bit. Well, just be a snapping turtle. Yeah, the penis would be much worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Pri? Yeah. What's up? Were you ever abused? Um, not really, no. Physical abuse. This is usually physical, physical abuse. No one ever hit you? No, no one ever hit me. All right, good. Mm. Then you don't need then the piercing. Then don't do this. <laughs> you, you have control over yourself. You can, cho you can choose not to do it. Yeah, don't do it. Yeah. Yeah, you're fine. fine. Please don't. Listen, Please I, I, I beg the, uh, the, the crazy, the crazy tats and the crazy piercings on women, I, it does not... Ugh. All it says to guys is that you're effed up. Yes. That's, that's all this. And well, it's, it says open for business. Go to good to go. Open for business. And then watch out. Yeah, and then, and then yeah. Run, yeah, run. It, yeah, fun lay, yeah. and then she's going to try to stab you, yes. or you're going to get the weird weird psycho mm -hmm. stuff going on. Even that sort of small of the back uh, stripper uh, sort of Rorschach test that this, everyone seems the to be putting on, the, on their, um, on their uh, sacred. Yeah, it's, it's a weird thing that looks do, like. Do your friends have those? Oh, oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. No, 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 go, go, go ahead. Please, please, keep going. Keep going. No, here's keep going, here's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of like when, you, when you're a kid, you take some construction paper and you'd fold it in half, then you'd open it and you put some ink or something in it and you fold it in half and pull it apart and it looked like a <laughs> butterfly that had uh, been uh, mm -hmm. eaten by bear and mm -hmm. crapped out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's that look. And uh, again, a beautiful woman. I'm looking at these uh, women it, 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 in the it would, mess, it would mess this up. Yeah, it would yeah, mess that. Not, I agree. It would mess it up. We're looking mm -hmm. at the album cover and yes, these the women I'm looking at in the other room are beautiful women. There's, uh, oh, don't F with yourself and you're beautiful. I agree. I 100% agree. agree. I, will, I will say this. Uh, what is uh, that actress, Kira uh, Knightley, who was in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean yeah. or whatever? She's a beautiful, beautiful woman. Saw her on the cover of some, like, Vogue or whatever magazine. Hair all chopped off. I mean, short, spiked. Yeah. Now it's black. It was blonde and down to, yeah. her, down to her waist when she did the Pirates of the Caribbean. Chopped off and black. Nope. Beautiful woman, screwed herself up. You beautiful women, you're, you're like, you know what? You're like amazing paintings. Walk away. You can't, while it's drying, you can't get in there and try to do touch-ups. Eventually, you start screwing things up, and uh, then you got a Picasso. Mm -hmm. It's a disaster. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Yeah. To walk away. Yes? Run. Run! All right, I'm going to go look at those tats, though. Take a uh, quick break. Louis the Fourteenth here. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody! It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Jason and Brian here tonight from Louis the Fourteenth. Name of the album: Best Little Secrets Are Kept in Yestra. I was going to say thank you for those of you who are calling to discuss fears of pregnancy and no sex drives after delivering a baby. But this is for a show I'm doing for Discovery Health Channel, a television show. So when you call, realize we're going to be interviewing you and trying to get you on TV to talk about fears you have about pregnancy or having mm -hmm. sex during pregnancy huh? mm -hmm. and or some drop or change in your sex drive after you delivered a baby. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I'll be in here tomorrow night at 8.30 Pacific time talking about drugs that have screwed up your sex drive. Huh? Um, we were uh, talking amongst uh, ourselves about uh, what women should do and shouldn't do as far as uh, helping the guys out. And I, I know in, in terms of... No, no, as making guys attracted to you, you mean? Well, here's the thing, ladies. I know you, you, you hide behind that uh, sort of uh, veneer of BS, which uh, everything is done for yourself. You buy the panties. No, no, you no, wait, no, wait, 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 you. You do they it for actually you. Do, they actually feel that way. I think they've talked mm. themselves no, into no. it. No, no, listen, because I've talked to women lately, and, they, and, they get, and then they get angry when their partners don't empathize with that. You don't understand me. I All have right. to feel pretty in order to be sexual. True, this but, isn't about you. No, this isn't about me. <laughs> I don't care if you I don't have, have to feel, feel pretty. pretty. I don't <laughs> have to. And, and by the way, that's not the Drew I know on the road. Don't worry. Uh, the I'll point, be back. The point, the point is, is women say, say one thing and do something else. The rap whether it's true or not, and I do believe they've talked themselves into it's it a true. little bit, but the, the rap is, is I buy the lingerie for me. I buy it so I feel beautiful. And uh, you know where I got Drew, if you want to get back at me, you say this well, isn't I... about you, Adam. So you get to throw <laughs> the joke right back on me. See? 
Windows <laughs> shut and painted closed now. But that's it, done. Here, here's the thing. That's the wrap. But then they spend hours in front of the mirror before they go out to the club. That's and they, for other they get vindictive. No, they go, and they go at it with other women. Yeah. And they, they do the lipo. And they do the collagen injection. To and compete. They, oh, yeah. Okay, to compete for what? For yeah, what? For males. To, with other up. women yeah. for males. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, what you're saying is... Remember is, what Jenny McCarthy said? She, she was here and she said the, the thing she, when her spread came out of play, but her only concern was, will other women think I look fat? Right. That's I, her only concern. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, right. What? No, I, I, what? I know. And, you know, but here's my point. It, it's sort of like saying we're on the Olympics. We're not going for the gold. We're trying to beat each other. Right. But the reality is, is we're going for the gold right. and we're beating each okay. other. Right. That's what women are doing. <laughs> and, and women do a lot of... They, they waste quite a bit of time. And especially effing up their hair, and they go a little nutty with the makeup. Oh, here's the big uh, waste of time, the, the nails. Fingernails, yeah, yeah. fingernails. Yeah. Tell that to the black mamas. <laughs> I got unicorns and freaky <laughs> and sparkly rainbow tape and everything. Yeah. Like, ass as big as a Winnebago. But, uh, hey, I see that. Holograms over each of the nails. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see. What sign are you? Gemini. I see uh, painted on your, your index finger there. I'm in. I'm going to ignore yeah. that uh, metric ton worth of caboose <laughs> you're dragging behind you. But I see those uh, three-tone uh, airbrushed fingernails. I'm in. Yeah, guys aren't into that. And, and I, I feel compelled to tell women, even though uh, magically they don't care about what guys think, although they spend a lot of time caring about what guys think, I feel compelled every once in a while to tell them what we care about and what we don't right, here care we go. about. What do we care about? Fingernails out. What, what do we care about? We got the out. What's the in? Uh, guys, I, I, I think like longer hair in general. When you get it chopped so off, too. we got problems. Yeah, I, although that's got to be sort of age appropriate, you know. I don't like I don't like yeah, sixty you know, one, one, I don't want one of my mom's friends coming in looking no. like Charo. No, so it's always, always a disaster. Well. But yeah, but yeah, well, yeah, but here's what generally it is. longer hair is more feminine, more attractive. Well, you oh, get yeah. to a certain age, you get off our list. So you know, go ahead and shave your head. We don't give a rat's ass. Nice. Just, just do whatever Very you nice. want. Well, uh, let's nice. be realistic. I'm just saying it's it's a young woman's game. That's all I'm saying. Uh, older women are great. They're fantastic. No, I don't mean old women. I mean That's why older. I see all those magazines. With, yeah, no. Old, older women are fantabulous, but yeah. we don't care what you do when you get a little older. You do your own thing. Yeah. All right. No, we don't want someone with... Look, you look crazy when you're 55 and you have the waist-length yes. blonde hair. Yes, right. Your hair mm -hmm. should be sort of appropriate. appropriate. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, but, I'm fine with that. Generally, but generally, the long hair is more sexual. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about yeah. what a 25-year-old woman right. should be doing, not, you know, right. post-menopausal right, Sandy okay, Duncan. next. What else? All right. Longish <laughs> hair. Okay. Longish right, hair, right. good. All right. Uh, take it easy on the... Uh, makeup. The sort of yeah, Barbie doll yeah. makeup yeah, and the absolutely. collagen and the sort of where you start looking well, like a mannequin. Don't yeah, fetishize something. yourself. Right. Yeah. 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 There's, there's people... There's a lot of... See, you think that guys are into Pam Anderson. Those are stupid guys who wear those greasy bang uh, from the Midwest, the fat blockhead guys with the greasy bangs and the super tight chokers that turns their head red and makes, their, makes them look from like a 10-gallon head to a 15-gallon head. Those idiots are the guys who like that. Yeah. They like a woman. And look, I wouldn't, I wouldn't <coughs> kick her out of bed, but most guys like a woman that's uh, a little softer around right, the edge. I completely agree. All right, yeah. what else? Uh, well, first off, you guys can join in and uh, go ahead and say right. what you uh, like. Uh, they, they're they're into symmetry, guys. Say generally, yeah, probably yeah. more than anything else. Yes, we don't need one. You know, we don't need the crazy uh, boobs sticking. I do, but most guys don't need the crazy <laughs> boobs that arrive ten minutes before you do and zero ass. Right. We we like a well proportioned woman. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we don't need the workout crazy woman. I don't need to see veins in your stomach. No, no, no. I, you know, I don't yeah. need the big veins in the shoulders yeah. and the stomach. I, I know you guys sort of appreciate that. Women sort of appreciate that on other women. Uh -huh. More of a respect. Like, oh, man, nine hours in the gym. That's crazy. And she doesn't, it lives off of uh, creatine. And, uh, yeah, and, yeah you, want, you want a woman to be water. soft. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, like, soft I, and, yeah. I like to see a belly, I, I like to see a belly button. It's got a little, little depth to it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I agree. That's a crazy <laughs> weird Audi with uh, the 12 pack and the veins, you know, freaked out. <laughs> And you, uh, you can't taint the parts of your body that a man appreciates the most. The, the breasts, stomach, face, yeah. legs, ass. Don't, yeah, don't put rings up. and or you know permanent. Yeah, don't draw on them. Don't exactly. uh, don't put holes in them. The lip ring, though, it's just 
Whoever invented that, yeah, lip, you hate should that, be sure. I can't I stand it. it. Now, the lip lip ring is distracting and painful looking and reminds me of a, just a, a trout. Yeah, you don't want to get this fat. It's a trout. No, it's like, I think of bass competitions <laughs> when I see that. I just think, uh, it's, a, it's a disaster. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that yeah. lip ring is going to get caught on my C ring, and we're going to have to go to the <laughs> have to be airlifted into the uh, hospital that way. Very embarrassing. All over the tabloids. Uh, all right. The other thing, and I know we touched on it with the long hair, but don't F with the hair too much because when you keep effing with it mm -hmm. over and over, it just sort of starts falling apart. No, you know, not been, too big, not too short, not too yeah, dyed. Not you too figure colored. out what's a good look for you and kind of stick with it. Don't dye it back and bleach yeah. it out and do all that. It ends up looking sort of sunblasted and dried out and screwed up. We, we like it to sort of you know hang there, not stay in there. Sort of what about uh, uh, lingerie and that kind of thing? Uh, fine, but uh, I, you know. All guys, and here's the uh, here's the sad truth about guys. We'd much rather have the uh, ass on the uh, Louis the Louis the Fourteenth uh, album cover, which is a beautiful one, by the way, packed into our underpants. Yeah, I <laughs> I agree. Uh, than, yeah. than a bad ass in the world's greatest lingerie. Yes, yeah. sad but true. Uh, so there's not really a whole lot. You're you're not going to bells and whistles aren't really going to cut it. Uh, you want to you want to make some inroads. Uh, how about a back rub? Uh, go ahead and uh, change the oil in the van. You know, but, come on, get busy. Yeah, that'll I mean, work. I think what yeah. the women don't realize also is that men like it when you're aroused, when the woman is aroused by being with the man. Right. Yeah. Know, the enthusiasm. That's like, oh, whew. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work every yeah. time. Yeah. 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 yeah, so if you're, uh, you know, if you're a good, solid uh, five in the looks department, go ahead and step it up in terms of the enthusiasm in the bedroom. That's uh, that's nice. And uh, let's see. The, the real shocking things, like the ones that have the uh, piercing blue contact lenses and stuff, you know, the more you start, uh -huh. you start looking uh -huh. like a guy. Here's a guy's biggest concern. We're going to get drunk and get hooked up with a he-she, mm -hmm. like a transvestite. Mm -hmm. So the closer you look to that, the, 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 the more well, frightened and, and we are. So I think the theme behind that is it's it's all the the uh, makeup and whatever the costume is going to be somebody different than who I think I'm hooking up with. Yeah, right. It's, yeah. Uh, it's something lurking beneath. Oh yeah, uh, that's scary. Right. What are you what are you covering? What are you compensating for? Is it a snapping for? turtle? Yeah. Is it a penis? Is it a giant? What, what's in right? There? What am I going to What am I going to grab? A snapping turtle. All right. So <laughs> oh, uh, uh, less is more. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah. Generally, yeah. Generally, less yeah. is more. And here's the uh, here's the last one. Do not try to. In the same. By the way, not nothing. Not but nothing, understated. just less is yeah. more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we don't need, uh, we like We like you to smell nice. We don't need to be clubbed over the head with your perfume and that kind of stuff. You know, don't, don't, uh, don't, don't hit us with all cylinders. The other thing is, is figure out your shape, figure out uh, your strengths and your weaknesses, and don't try to transform yourself into something you're not. You're not going to be one of the Barbie twins if that's not what you look like, <laughs> right. you know. And when you try to shove yourself into that mold, yeah. it ends up yeah. it being a disaster. We want to see the best version of you we mm -hmm. can see. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, all right. Yeah. All right. Now, you call in and judge. No. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> Gonna give out an Send us a number. picture and we'll judge you right now. Yeah. <laughs> that might take it Germany or Florida. Germany or Florida. This game is uh, sweeping the nation. It is. Uh, it's it's the biggest game no one's ever heard of. <laughs> it's uh, all bizarre stories emanate from either Germany or Florida. The people call in. They tell us the story and then we guess. Is it Germany? No, we tell them. We it's tell Germany them. Or Florida. And then oftentimes we're wrong. <laughs> is it Germany or Florida? Go ahead, Lisa. Hi. All right. Yeah. A middle school golf coach was arrested after hanging from the ceiling in the school gymnasium and watching a 20-year-old female gym teacher and two students undress in the girls' locker room and shower area. Mm. When the gym teacher spotted him climbing down from the ceiling, she asked what he was doing. He claimed he was planning to scare them by throwing a basketball down on them, but she noticed that he was not carrying a basketball at the time. According to police, he had had an, un an unobstructed view of her office, her private bathroom, and could see the girls' locker room and shower area by peeking through holes in the air vents. He has been mm -hmm. charged with three voyeurism crimes and suspended without pay. Ironically, the suspect was a replacement for a teacher who was fired last year for asking a 16-year-old for oral sex. Oh, Florida. Wow. Well, yeah, that part put it back in Florida. First yeah, off, it's in Florida. Florida. At least he asked. I mean, he did, <laughs> yeah, he did his job. Yeah, you don't assume. Now, the, the voyeurism. Who said chivalry is dead? Of course, in Florida, it's <laughs> alive and well. Felt like Florida. It felt Germany with the voyeurism, though. Voyeurism. Ger is basketball is a big in Germany? I don't oh, know. good point. They do. They do. There are quite a few guys in the NBA yeah. these days that are coming out of uh, that part of the oh, world. But, it, but the, the last bit just slammed it into Florida. 
Yeah, I think we all felt Florida. Although, yeah, voyeurism, Germany, Florida just should be raping. Yeah, well, yeah. Voyeurism in, in Florida is what you see on your way to rape. Right. It's like a, like a, a, it's yes. just like a rhino charging a jeep, what that looks like before they actually crash into right. it. That's and also what in Florida, the, the, the serial nature of this where you can't hire somebody who doesn't do this. That does That's feel Florida. Like, that feels like Florida. Yeah. All right, we all going Florida? I feel Florida. I'm going Florida? Florida? All right, we feel Florida, Lisa. You guys are right. It's Florida. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Know that you. That's why Drew corrected me when I said we guess. He said, uh, no, we tell them. Mm -hmm. That is Florida, everybody. <laughs> Fantabulous. I don't know. Look, I know this sounds uh, horrible, but uh, a bunch of hot 16-year-olds running around in those uh, tight shorts. It's got to be tempting. Working up a sweat. It's got to be hard. Just, I couldn't right. be a teacher, I don't think. Hit, hit the showers, ladies. I mean, I'll be right back. You're just pacing around, staring at that big clock on the scoreboard. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Mm-hmm. Mm mm-hmm. All right. Christina? <coughs> yeah, hi. Oh, oh boy. Ooh. Ooh. You know. 19. Little girl voice. Sounds, sounds three. What's going on? Oh, Christina. Christina, what happened? Well, wait a minute. Maybe she's just small in stature. No, no. Christina, do the uh, alphabet song for us, if a, you would. A, B, C, D. Y. Please do it for us. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That's good. Okay, yeah. Christina, what What's happened? the other one we say? Oh, more, yeah. Say, uh, more, more jello. More jello, please. With, uh, more jello, please. Oh, yeah. Great. Now say one. That's adorable. Say one. Right. Say one. Anderson takes it to some weird, <laughs> weird place. <laughs> All right, just, just for Anderson, I want to ride the pony, Daddy. I want to ride the pony, Daddy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, now do it with, with, a, so a do it with some enthusiasm. Do it with some enthusiasm and action. I want to ride the pony, Daddy. Oh. Yeah. That's a 19-year-old person. Oh, everybody. Oh, that's All right. great. So, so what happened? happened when you were three? Nothing. Oh, please. I knew I was <laughs> oh, please. What? I Nothing knew what? I was in trouble. <laughs> no, uh, no sexual abuse at any age? No, the only thing was my dad was drunk when I was young, but that was it. Well, I, he was drunk a lot of the time when you were drunk when you were young. Yeah, yeah, Did but he, he's sober now. How old was he when you got? How old were you when he got sober? Um, ten, eleven. I would venture, Christina, something happened during some of his uh, drunken phase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's you, been, you, like, this, go like ahead. Kicking holes in things, but that's it. So scaring no, the crap like abuse or anything. Hymens or walls? Scaring the crap out of you, basically. <laughs> Ter terrorizing you a little bit, right? Yeah, it, yeah, it scared right. me. And did you right. ever go out into the neighborhood? Are we ever victimized by anybody? You know, were you ever, did other kids play doctor with you, this sort of thing? Ooh. Um, I had an incident where a guy grabbed my boot in high school when I wouldn't No, 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 no. That won't We're looking three or four. Well, hold on no. a second. It would be hard to remember. She so, sounds so little. You know? I, I know. I know this This sounds like, uh, you know, a, a candidate for uh, sexual abuse. But her dad was an alcoholic, and he was rageful. No, and a lot of terror. Yeah, I get it. But, he, here, but here's the thing. The, the, this is so classic for what we are accustomed to hearing with sexual abuse, is that is that when there's terror in the home, those kids become great victims by babysitters and neighbors, that kind of thing. True. Yeah, I listen to you guys all the time. Okay, well, all right. But I'm, I'm just hearing victim. Right, it's not right. necessarily sexual right. victim, but anyway. Right. Anyway. So uh, how's it, how are you uh, stature-wise? I'm 5'11", 210. Tall. 5 feet tall, yeah. Yeah, and I weigh 120. All right. I just so lost a bunch of weight. I used to be a big girl. Oh yeah! Listen, here's the thing. If you, once it, again, another thing for the sexual. If you're person. wide load, you gotta you gotta either change your voice or lose weight because you you can't uh, tiny. You can't have that voice show. That's like Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah. Hey, get over here, buddy. I'll kick your ass. <laughs> give a good ass kick and I hang this phone up. Give it, put a smack down on your ass, and then Tyson shows up. <laughs> but uh, uh, but anyway, anyway. So so what's the question? What's going on? Okay, um, my boyfriend and I we have sex. Um, a lot and how long have you been with your boyfriend hang on how long have you been with him three months and how old is he he's 19 too all right mm -hmm. go ahead and um he was diagnosed with epilepsy and he takes medication for that and for sleeping mm -hmm. and there are times when we do it and he can't bust can't and bust. i was wondering i've never heard it called bust wow oh. all right and uh, could that be his medication or is that could epilepsy? Be his medication. Yeah, 
I don't know, because sometimes he says when he can't bust, it's when the night before he'll take his sleeping medication. But mm -hmm. other than that, when he just takes his seizure medicine, like, it doesn't happen or anything. Yeah. Well, I'll tell okay, you, well, there if you I go. couldn't bust, just work that, I want to ride the pony daddy line in. Yeah, and, uh, be, yeah. that would work any time. <laughs> It'd be like, uh, here's what it would be other like, than, right? Other yeah. than the little voice, I'm the manliest chick you know. I love beer, I love football, anything mm. like that. Sure, sure. Whatever. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not I'm trying to think if that's a good thing or not. Yeah. All right, so uh, listen here, uh, Pixie Stick. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the uh, answer uh, to this is. Uh, it's probably a good thing. What are you using for protection? Um, condoms and birth control. All right, using both. Yeah, All right. you're good. Yeah. Are you going to go to school? What are you doing? I'm, I go to community college. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Sweetie, remember, junior college, not community college. Community college makes it okay. <laughs> junior college, yeah, is... Right. It's better than not going to school, right? Uh, uh, not according to Adam. Not if, not uh, if, you, not if you, get a, you get a job. No. It's, be, it's better than sitting home and just better. lighting off fireworks. Right. Yeah. Right. But but not, not, not really anything. Uh, you know, if you're working, it's better to have a well, job. So is she, are you worried that, uh, that you know, you've the guy answered, has a problem well, or you've something? Already, you've already answered your own question. You said he takes a certain medicine, then he can't yeah. have an organ. There you go. Well, well, that's that's I, a common thing. Right. I didn't know if it was just one or the other. If it was no, it's the medicine. I think it's a okay. it's a very good bet that it's the medicine. He, you, you, uh, so it looks like a rose, smells like a rose. All right, I'm don't. Sure. Uh, you know, it quacks like a duck. Sounds like yeah. Like it. Smells more like bleach, actually. Yeah. Um, so enjoy nice. this guy. Don't get pregnant. And uh, Stay if you're still in junior college in five years, I want you to give us a call so I can yell at you. Okay, fair enough. All right. Talk to you while Eugene. He's got a question for the band. Eugene, twenty six. Mm. Yeah. What's up? How are you? I want to ride the pony. <laughs> yeah. Well, Brian's over here. What's now, up? Um, quick, two quick questions. Uh, first one is, um, I heard on MTV that uh, Louis XIV thinks that they are the greatest band ever, which I will say they are a seriously kick-ass band. However, I was just wanting to know what their take on it. We did not say that, actually. We said that we were our own favorite band which I believe is a, a different thing, you know. Uh, yeah. No, we, I don't think we're the greatest band ever. I just think that we're, a, you know, a very good band that we happen to like. I don't think everybody else will agree to that, but, uh, you know, we're really, we like our music. What can we say, you know? Well, fantastic. That's good to know. But no, but seriously, you guys are awesome. Looking forward Thank to you. the Jimmy Kimmel show tonight. Thank you. Uh, Thanks. Awesome. Uh, and then the second one is, it's more of a broad question. I was wanting to know if you guys, if uh, this is more towards Dr. Drew, uh, what is a chode? A chode, I, as I understand, is basically the perineum. It says, Adam, Adam, you have a way of describing that area. Uh, no, I, I don't, I don't, I look at that as a Spanish slang for, for, for penis. penis. Yeah. But I think it's, it, it, sometimes it means that, and sometimes it is, as you call, Anusburg and Scrotumville. That, that, yeah. Well, no, here's the thing about the, the chode. Uh, it, it's whatever it means to you. It's like a <laughs> Where does that term come from? Does. It's, it's, it's Hispanic. It's out I, here. I think, I think, it's, yeah. I think choda. It, I, I think it does they mean penis sometimes. They call me that in junior high, so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that. You've looked into it, yeah. I'm assuming they weren't talking about my perineum. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in, engineer Chris, what do you know, buddy? You're half Mexican. Chode? Dude, I don't know. Anything? <laughs> All right. I, so, by, by perineum, we mean the part between the genital. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got that, but yeah. I don't know. Mm. The Spanish. Yeah. yeah. Well, but put it, put it, uh, get on the uh, Google there. See what you can find out. With After Chode. you look up Natalie Portman's education. Oh, I got that. <laughs> okay, good. Thanks. Yeah. All right. She went, she's going to Harvard or she already went. Uh, All right. Well, there you go, Drew. Uh, Drew's, uh, we, Drew was talking smack about Natalie Portman uh, during, the, she was during the break, but here's the thing about Drew is Drew is so married to uh, the college system that if somebody says they're going to an Ivy League, then then Drew's sort of screwed. I'm, because I'm in. I'm, no, I've, I've rescinded everything I've said. Yeah. No, you can't be stupid and go to an Ivy League yeah. school. All right, where are we? We're, We're taking, taking a break, yeah. Uh, one more Yeah, call. a break. All right, wait a minute. Because we're going to hear a song in the next segment. Oh, Koki has giant boobs. <laughs> Cokie? Or Cookie? Mm -hmm. Cookie Roberts? Cookie? It's, it's a it's C. Cokie. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's up? You're 13? You have giant boobs? <laughs> yeah. What size are you coming in at? D36. Bouncy, oh, bouncy. Oh. Just, yes. D36. You'll grow into them. Do not touch them. Okay. Yeah, they, yeah what do you, do you want to get rid of them? Well, what's you, the, what's yeah, the problem? Do you have back problems? I, I just, what did you say? Do you have back problems? Oh, well, kind of. 
Mm-hmm. I'm not fat or anything. I weigh like 102. I'm like. What's five. your question, oh, man? I, I just want to know if when I'm older, are they going to be like huge? Uh, could be. It's hard to know. How tall are you? I'm five four. Five four, five, four one, one, one or two. two. Hold on a second, though. You want to get her number? Is that what you're trying to do? <laughs> no, she's 13. She's, uh, not, she's 13. Not, uh, Adam's confused by the 36 It's not 36 like she's 14. Part. You're she's confused 13. by the 36 <laughs> part. I'm confused by the... Yes, when you're 5'4 and 102, should be you can have a D cup, but you shouldn't have a 36-inch yeah. back. Although, once in a while, you'll go a little higher in the number to make up when you should go up in a cup. Mm-hmm. Huh? Uh-huh. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why, uh, 36 is, uh, sort of the number of someone who's got a little bigger back than, uh, f- you know, 100 pounds. Oh. Yes? Oh. Yeah? Oh, I don't know. It's certain types of bras. I'm always a D, though. A D, right. four, a D, three. All right. 34. Okay. 34 mm-hmm. sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Are guys, uh, hassling you, making fun of you? Um, they're always like, oh, yeah, flash me, flash you, like, stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. they're always, like, picking on me or, like, always, like, trying to grab me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I pull you right out of right out of public school and yeah. just start raising you. In the oh, I'm homeschooled oh, yeah. right now. You're homeschooled. Oh, smart, yeah, I, smart. I have problems with school. <laughs> Why? What's going on? Well, I would just like lie and stuff like that. Like I, I just like cause trouble and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, what does that mean? Start start fires or oh, no, what, no, no. argue I would with like teachers? Lie to my parents and, like sneak out. Not go to school. You would cut cut sneak school. Sneak out to meet with guys and stuff. Mm-hmm. Who would you meet? What would you do when you snuck out? I wouldn't do anything bad. I just I would like sneak out and not tell my parents, and they get all like, yeah. So, like, what's sneak your, out of sneak out of school? What's your ethnicity? At night, right? Your ethnicity? Oh, I'm white. I'm like just white. Okay. All right. And uh, what was the deal? So you would cut class? Well, we're like Mormon. Oh, ooh. wow. Bum, 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 bum. And and so I don't understand the part where you would sneak out. You sneak out of your house or sneak out of school? Out of my house. So they pulled you out of school? Oh, yeah. And then we're, I'm going back next year. Let's wait. A lot, lot of missing. Okay, lot of yeah. Yeah. Missing. yeah. Yeah, you just sneak out of the house. All right. Are your parents, uh, are they normal? Are they sort of religious nuts? Mm, not so much. Are you a Mormon? Yeah. <laughs> I love that drop. All right, so All listen, right. Koki, here's, here's the deal. Uh, you're way too young to do anything about this. Yes. You can consult with a plastic surgeon no, no, or somebody no. like that. Don't no, don't. Not, oh, no, not, not now. Eventually. Not now, eventually. eventually. And realize that guys are just pigs, and uh, don't don't pay attention how they treat you. And girls are going to treat you differently, too. Ooh. They oh, yeah. A little bit. yeah, that's another reason I got out, because the girls, like, hated me. They come, like, slutting the whore. Well, they're Which jealous. Is ridiculous. Yeah. It's bizarre, isn't it? It's bizarre. Well, why why were they calling you slut and whore? Well, I, I didn't do anything bad. Because like, of how she looked. Like, give BJ's or anything like that. I, I, I know, but here, here's the thing, too. I, I find kids are sort of cruel but predictable, and they usually don't just call you slut and whore just because they do it. And then they're, they're people that sort of sail through life making friends and not getting in any trouble. No one hassles them. And then there's the people that just, my teacher hates me. Yeah, yeah. Everyone always makes fun of me. And yeah. I always always wonder, and as sad as it is, I say, what are they doing to bring that on mm-hmm. themselves? Well, you, you figure the guys are probably giving her attention, so the girls are jealous. And so that's why right. she's the slut. But still, to go right. over the top with the slut and whore stuff, either they're not doing that. She sort of feels like they're looking at her that way. Yeah. Or she is aggressive or obnoxious. She's probably given in to the attention, I bet. I I just Imagine. remember, I, I, I remember my uh, high school days, I would, uh, it was many years ago, I would pull up my raccoon coat, my <laughs> Stutz Bearcat, 22 Skidoo. You remember that back then, Drew? It's a raccoon hat. Roy, that long Roy, ago. 20s. Uh, no, it's coonskin. Yeah, no, this is the raccoon coat. I'm talking yeah, for the I 20s. About, yeah. yeah. Fred McMurray. <laughs> With a little flubber, flubber stuff, yeah. <laughs> but here, here's the point. Uh, usually, 95% of the time, you can make it through school without drawing the attention, negative attention of your peers mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, if you if you navigate correctly. Right, yeah. The yes. ones that sort of draw it out seem to bring it out and in a way uh, becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy mm-hmm, yeah. and uh, then you got uh, then you got a Columbine situation on your right, hands. Right. Uh, there are ways to do it and blaming everyone else is not really the way to do it. That's figure out what you got to do. Everything in life. Even otherwise. if they're bad people, figure out a way to navigate. Yes. Right. I'm still looking for fears of sex during pregnancy and people whose sex life is changed by pregnancy and delivery. True. I thought we had a break. Now we got a break. All right. Hey, listen. And, uh, Koki, call me... Uh, Five years. Call me an hour before you turn 18. <laughs> I was going to say on your 18th birthday, but I, 
I figure it's going to take me an hour to shower and dry. Yeah, yeah. So I want to get there right at midnight. All right. Well, uh, and how's the law work? Do they look at when you were born or does it strike a midnight? You know or I mean? is when you're conceived. Well, oh, 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 that might save you nine months. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need a note. I'm going to need a note. Yeah. Okay? All right, you, you may be subpoenaed, so just remember. Uh, you guys, too, by the way. Yeah. You witnesses. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Chris, uh, you're cool. You hang <laughs> it. We'll take a uh, quick break. I don't need uh, who's Adam. Uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Well, I knew, too. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline of Adam. That's uh, Dr. Drew. We got Jason and Brian here tonight from mm -hmm. Louis the Fourteenth. Hello. Going to hear another uh, song from the guys. The uh, fellows will be uh, performing tonight on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Uh, well, I've uh, I've been in uh, sitting here for a few years. I've not found anything that engineer Chris knew. But uh, I do know now what his he's, wheelhouse is. He's in love with Natalie Portman. Yeah, yes. I really like her. If the topic is stuff he beats off to, <laughs> he is a goddamn expert. He, he just rattled off every movie Star Natalie Wars, Portman Garden did. State, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. well, we know. Let's get her in here. And come on. Yeah. All, uh, all stored up in the, uh, in, the man, in the hard drive upstairs and then hard drive it's, downstairs. That's where it's stored. That's where it's stored, yeah. <laughs> Real quick, man. Talk to Celia. I said stored in the Nard Drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stored in Chris's Nard Drive. All right. Uh, oh, yes. We have a little... Uh, we're going to hear Louis XIV song, but we have a little uh, Choda definition. Celia? Yeah, hi. <laughs> What's up? You're 17. Yeah, you guys are pretty creative with what you thought a Choda was. You know the what real definition. Yeah. And by the way, you're 17, you're a chick, and you're calling from San Francisco, so I've braced yeah. myself for a disappointment, and I'm not going to believe anything that comes out of your mouth, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, a toad is a dick that's wider than it is long. Mm. Uh, that's believable. Mm. It's definitely... I, I think, yeah, that makes sense. However, I think the, the generic use of the word found far greater meaning. Just the oh. penis? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think it's the taint area. Right. It's the penis. Maybe not. <clears throat> and it's yeah. the chode short for choda. Did you learn that in finishing school, <laughs> Celia? Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. All right, baby doll. Thank you, and I'm sorry for ever doubting you. All right. Thanks. Bye. All right. Bye. Like the folks are in a hurry. <laughs> yeah. So Listen, right. I got to do a whole. I got a whole, whole national radio run uh, tomorrow morning. I get off the air. Save yeah. my voice. Talk All about right. chodes. Yeah, let's. I got other stations to call. Do a little uh, chode clarification on. I got NPR. I'm going to be doing chode, and then the chode seminar and the chode lecture series. All things chode. All <laughs> things chode. You've seen the show. Spun that off into another series where the maids, the uh, maid from All Things Chode, uh, got her own show. So it's turned it into quite a lifestyle. Chode talk. Chode talk. And then there's the apparel, scarves. Sure. Yeah. Uh, let's hear a song. Yes, please. Should we do that? Showed where. Mm -hmm. What do we... Uh, oh, we got uh, we got another song. Yes, it is. Boy, someone's on top of their game here. I'm guessing that's... Uh, in, uh, I mean, uh, I should say... Uh, junior, junior, junior producer, uh, Lauren. Yeah. Here's a little something from uh, Louis XIV called God Killed the Queen. Yeah. See, the band knows. And clued us in on when the song mm -hmm. was uh, going to end. That's like a segue that's, that's about to come up. So Chris argued with him, of course. But of course. the band, they were there. Huh? You guys were in the Let's recording. Keep moving. Keep rolling. What's that, Drew? What What's do you want to do? I want to take some calls. You want to go look up some more Portman information? No, no. You don't need a computer. <laughs> you got to Chris, Chris yeah, over yeah. here. I'm looking for some pictures of her. So Yeah. Mm. yeah. Some of his pictures. You'll just <laughs> boot up the NARD drive and <laughs> you'll get whatever you need on it. All right, let's uh, keep going. Sarah? Hi guys, how are you 20? doing? Hi. Yeah, what's up? All right, well, all right, I'm 20 years old, and I'm not really interested in having sex with guys at all. I'm interested in guys, in a, you know, I'm not a lesbian or anything like that. That's definitely not the case. But I think it may be because of the fact that the, the very first guy that I was with, I was with from I was 16 until I was about 18. You're a lesbian. He was pretty unspectacular in the bedroom. Like, what does that mean? What, what did he do that was so unpleasant? He was just boring. That's about all. And it wasn't anything completely unpleasant. It was just boring. All right. So that, what's, that, 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 doesn't, that doesn't, shouldn't do it. But what's, but It also do doesn't focus what the problem was. I mean, he just was not responsive to you. It was too quick. What was, what was She's angry at men. Um, he was pretty inexperienced, too. 
So and what so, did he do? I mean, that's, that's 16. How much of experience can you possibly have? Yeah. Well, it was pretty much he would just kind of do what he had to do for himself, and then that was kind of it. Okay. All right. Hold uh, on a second. There's plenty of most guys. I thought, that's, yeah, that, that, that's how you, you do it. <laughs> yeah, you're Isn't that exactly it? Yeah. <laughs> No, it's yeah. It's what like do I know? It's an episode of Survivor. I mean, yeah. You just do what you got to do. You know, it's not to get voted off. That's all. I I don't. Uh, Sarah's got issues with guys. I don't know. I'm getting that. Right. What's up, Sarah? Where's your dad? Um, my dad and I have a very good relationship. Uh-huh. Aha! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> not really? a creepy good relationship. A good creepy relationship. good. No, not a creepy good relationship. Well, not creepy. good. But all right. honestly, what? uh, um, when I was about. 10, maybe 11 years old, I found out that he was a recovering sex addict. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. But he's, he's completely, he's in recovery now, and he is absolutely not on that path. I mean, he's a wonderful person. And All right, yeah, I know he's a I great admire, guy. Everyone's great. I admire my dad to no end. I think he's one of the most amazing people on the world. All right, now, see, now you're overdoing it. <laughs> no, I really do. Why? What's so amazing about him? Um, Besides he's, that he's listening right now. Right. No, definitely not listening. Uh, he's very giving to other people. He's very compassionate sure. and understanding. Sure. Game all crabs. Yeah. <laughs> <Sex addict. laughs> he's just overall a amazing person. Uh, all right. How did you find out at 10 he was a sex addict? Hmm. Good question. Uh, my sister told me when we were on vacation one night, and I, I was very upset about it, and I confronted him about it, and he confessed to me at that point and like we kind of had a family conference type thing oh, so, he, so he was cheating myself. on your, your mom was he cheating on your mom then? he had before but at that point that behavior had stopped yeah, was hold, your, hold, hold on a second. Hold on. He, she's all up, up in her head. Look, when you're when you're ten, you find out your dad's a sex addict and he's cheating on your mom with multiple Freaks partners. Out. You're freaked out about mm -hmm. men. Yeah. You, you should be angry at your dad. And now you're all up in your head. He's the greatest. He's warm. Nobody's kinder than my dad at the time. I, you know, but this is. You're not allowing yourself to feel what your dad did, and I can see it in your attitudes toward uh, men. I can. Mm -hmm. I'm getting it. I'm getting I, you it. Know angry. What? I, I don't want to uh, well, dissuade then be you from quiet. the path. Then and be I'm quiet. going to. Yes, I will. Then be quiet. Okay. Go ahead, Sarah. When he was doing these things, though, I was completely unaware of what was going on because I was too young. But by the All time right. I found out, that behavior had completely stopped. So I never got a chance to feel any anger towards things that I realized were going on. Yeah, all right. I'm, she had no feelings about it. It was just like, yeah, hey, he used to be on the Pro Bowlers tour, and now he's retired. Same thing. Well, it's kind of like trying to imagine what it would be like living in the 1500s. When you don't know what it's like. You can only Yeah, imagine. except for the 1500s were uh, nine months ago, and uh, and the dad was, uh, the king was uh, banging around on the queen, and you were living in the castle. And, and you know it, too, whether someone tells you or not no, when you're I, I know that it age. To be true. He's told me that it happened. All right. All right. So, sex addict, what does that mean? Um, he, I guess, he had cheated on my mom a couple of times with, uh, with prostitutes. Yeah, this is a prostitute thing. Yeah, and then a couple hundred, figure a couple hundred, by yeah. the way, if you're going to go with the addict label. Yeah. Because other than that, know. you just do to travel. I don't know how many yeah. it was, but. Um, All right. And what's he do for a living? My dad is a chemical engineer. Chemical engineer. Wow. So he gets freaky with the prostitutes. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Get out the Bunsen burner and the graduated cylinder. It's so the irony. Out. He's got the, he's got the pen. The, the oh, yeah. The uh, pocket of protector. Bottle glasses. <laughs> I mean, uh, he's a so, very educated person, so it's not like my family is definitely not white trash. No, I know. All right, but he's in recovery and he's, he's right. a spiritual person. Right, now, so I'm going to leave him alone now. Now, uh, so you had a bad time with your uh, first guy. By the way, she stuck with the guy for years in spite of it not being particularly sensational. Uh, yeah. All right, here's the other thing. I, I stayed with him too long, and by the time the relationship ended, he'd gained a lot of weight, and I know this is very, uh, it's very... Superficial, superficial, but go ahead. Right, there you go. Superficial, thank you. Uh, but he gained a lot of weight, and I lost interest in him physically as well. Yeah, Sarah, you need, you need to find you need to find guy you're super attracted to and just go for it. Yeah, whether you have a relationship with him or not. But I can't seem to find guys that. I'm Why not? Why? I, I don't know. I guess I'm just too picky. No, I uh, know. Wrong. You, you go ahead and be picky and uh, present yourself to someone that you'll be fine. Where you condoms? What, what do you do? Do you go? Do you work? Do you go to school? Uh, I go to school full time. 
UCLA, Reagan, Reagan where do you go? college, right? UCLA. Yeah, so, uh, UCLA. Yeah. So, See? I just picked that. Yeah, I know you did. Credit for that. She's calling from Los Angeles, and we know she didn't go to junior college in, uh, like I said, Northridge. <laughs> yeah. That's you will not have trouble at college. UCLA. You, you did you, the math. You, you but you could have given Drew his props when he told you the name of the school you went to. That is pretty impressive. And thank you, sir. Thank you. I thank you for the respect, so thank you very much. All right. Well done. All right. So listen. Go, oh, by the way, Bruins. people uh, always say, oh, you don't think I know the difference between a junior college kid and a UCLA kid, even one I don't really like and one I'm making fun of and one his dad I'm picking on and stuff. I, I, you hear the difference in the voice, everybody. It's quite obvious. But here's the thing. Uh, Drew's not going along with me on this one because uh, I discovered it. And, uh, but here's the thing. You can't be right. You cannot you're, you're, be. You're, uh, I'm telling you, dad, sex addict, uh, yeah, everything's cool. You got issues with guys. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why it's a little different. She, why? It's a sex addict in recovery, and, and that's something you rarely come across. I, I, can't, I can't characterize for you what the impact of that's going to be on a kid. It's going to be something. And the, I agree with you. There's something here. I just don't know what it is. I, I'm yeah. saying uh, I got... I got issues and yeah, some yeah. anger and some yeah. uh, some distrust. Yeah, yeah. Just trust. Uh, yeah, I, I think she's I'll, I'll give you that. Distrust she, of men. So give yeah. She seemed like she was overly, uh, you know, trying to say that he was this and that. She and really great. Needs, she needs to have she some fun. She doesn't really buy it, I you think, guys, deep down. Fun. Right. She needs to go have some fun with guys. Have some mm -hmm. dates. Uh, you, go and, date. And have a good time. Don't examine. Don't. Uh, you're all up in your head. Yeah, but yeah. on the other hand, so far up in your head that you're sort of glossing over the past, and right. there's some issues that are affecting the present. You're smart. Mm -hmm. Nominal, Look at though. Not a big deal. No, no. No, I know. I think I she's. I, think I disagree she can, with that. I think just life will deal with this one. I, she's I really smart, do. and she'll be fine, but uh, I don't know. Uh, Maybe you're right. Uh, okay. Well, uh, look, a little therapy couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt. All right, we'll take a, a quick break. Be right back after this. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Jason Bryan here tonight from Louis XIV. And I, let me tell you something. When I look at Louis XIV, I see uh, Louise X1V. <laughs> that's, that's what I see. I mean, really, I'm that stupid. That I... I have to I have to really work it not to You're see no Louise Natalie X, X, X yeah, one B. Exactly. No, I am not Natalie Portman. It's, oh, I wish I was. I'd go home and take pictures of myself <laughs> nude and put them on the internet, <laughs> <laughs> and then I would see them. <laughs> oh wait a minute, I'd sell them to Chris. And Chris, let me I'd buy them, dude. Yeah, let me tell you something. What? Uh, Ten bucks an hour? Yeah. yeah so it'd be about five <laughs> years. About five years of work before you even saw a nipple. Uh, we we work it out. I come right. to her mom's house and torture you. <laughs> my, my ass, God, God. That's nice. Yeah, it'd be <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'd probably let him have sex with me, and just hope some somewhere in the middle I wouldn't change back to Adam. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'd be horrible for me, but worse for Chris. Yeah, yeah, I'd let you do me. I, I would. Great. Yeah, yeah. I, I try not to talk. Call me daddy. Yeah. Oh. Great. Perfect. Yeah, 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 great. Yeah, you put on, you put in a Star Wars. Everyone buzzing about the new Star Wars, yeah. by the way. And uh, I you know to, it's I have just junk. Yeah. I have to yell it's at all the nerds junk. in the office. They're like, oh, man, <laughs> counting down the days till the new. I'm like, uh, you said that for the last three. They're all blue. Why is it? Oh, yeah. no, this one. This one's no, this is good. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. There's no way. Darth Maul and uh, Annika Skywalker now. No, this is a pre-pre-prequel. This is when uh, it's like. You nerds buy into this line of crap uh, every two and a half years. This one's going to suck just like the... Oh, no. Oh, no. Not this one. It's sort of that thing. It's that sort of guy's a fan of the uh, perpetual 500 team, but yeah. this year's the year they're taking it. Yeah. They're going all the way. Yeah. Going to the Super Bowl. I, why, why do people have to do that? And in mm. Star Wars, uh, the first one was good for its time. Uh, the next one was uh, uh, not as good, and then they started coasting downhill yeah, from there, sucked, right? I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah. All right, let's take a call. We have now, no, last, no time. Last two or three were unwatchable. Enough Star Wars. <laughs> All, right. All right. Listen, you had to bring up the old Portman thing. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Karen? Yeah? 24? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why do you end up with guys who like rough sex? Yeah. Um, here's the thing. I was uh, taken advantage of when I was 16. I um, was with a guy who was 22, and um, we I I did we messed around, but I told him, oh, I don't really want to have sex. I want to wait. And he was like, oh yeah, sure, uh -huh, okay, yeah, that's fine. And then basically drugged my drink and took me upstairs and made me ride the pony. How, how do you know he uh, drugged your drink? Um, because my memory kind of lapses in and out of that night. Yeah, we, yeah, maybe uh, we just drinking we, a lot. Maybe just drinking. No, I didn't. I had one drink. Oh, 
He went it's from I didn't drink to I had one mm -hmm. drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did the guy pour it for you? Um, I think so, yeah. Yeah, you get a little heavy-handed when you're pouring the uh, young lady drink <laughs> yeah. sometimes. Like, uh, <laughs> the smear, the smear it off, I was like, kagoon, 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 and then just an uh, eye yeah. dropper of uh, from from orange juice <laughs> into it. All right, uh, Karen, uh -huh. uh, anything before that growing up? No, no. Good family, um, no problems with the parents. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you like ladies? Mm, not really. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> not at all, or a little bit. Uh, on occasion, yeah, but not. No, it's not oh, my preference. No. Drew, Drew's uh, lesbian spidey sense was tingling. Oh no. No, but yet on occasion you're with a woman. What is that? Uh, and and not enough is made of that in today's society. It's, oh, you just uh, you go down on a chick every other month. Oh, I see. You're not a lesbian though. I, Back in the day, that made you a full-blown lesbian, you being with a handful of chicks, uh, you know, now and again. Yeah, people are certainly more flexible with it these days, but there's something up, Karen. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, All right, so you don't have time here's, to get Here's it. the thing. Yeah, well, Drew was talking too much about Portman. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing. He, a little uh, rough trade is fine, but if it's, you know, the guy's breaking a bottle and stabbing and, you. And if the bad ass. guy who treats you crappy also, it's part of a more general abusive strategy mm -hmm. or, or presentation. Uh, yeah, I'd look into this. All right. Abusive yeah. strategy. Abusive person. Good name for the next time. What, what is rough sex? Like rough sex as in just having it hard or are you like we'll getting have to punched? Talk about it during the break. Forces the anal and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, it's more of that stuff. I think it's yeah. crossing the line. Yeah. Otherwise, it's you're gonna, not it's calling the show. going to push her in the lesbian direction. Right. She's going to end up in Lesboville. Mm -hmm. What is she saying is the problem? She just was, is wondering why she's with... Yes, why she, she finds guys. She has a more overall problem, though, which she is... She finds abusive guys. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back after this. That's the show, everybody. We thank uh, Louis XIV. Thank, thank you for having us. Thanks. Well thank you yeah. very much. Nice to meet you guys. You Likewise. too. Come on back uh, anytime. Love to. Well, how about tomorrow? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what are you well, doing tomorrow? Yeah, all right, then. Fine. We'll be here all week. Pepper is in here tomorrow. Yeah, from uh, Police Woman. Hell, yeah. we're gonna look into Pepper. Huh? Yeah. It's well, bad. maybe it's uh. It's bad. Oh, it's bad, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I'm into Pepper. Don't yeah, get me sergeant. wrong. Don't get me wrong. Uh, go out and uh, get the CD. It's called The Best Little Secrets Are Kept, and uh, watch them tonight on Jimmy Kimmel Live. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. I All have right. to feel pretty in order to be sexual. This has been Loveline. Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. Or the station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.